Just 80 years from now, future generations will be looking at your vacation photos in the Maldives as if they were scenes from Atlantis. Because it's quite likely that by the year 2100, the islands will have completely submerged. The Maldivian government has officially declared this, as 80% of the islands are just one meter above sea level. And this is happening due to the rapid melting of glaciers at a rate of 4 centimeters of ice per year, which is 10 times faster than just 30 years ago. Scientists say this resembles an anomalous rapid termination of the moderate ice age we are still in. And even though the impact of our industry on climate change has already been proven, not long ago, scientists discovered a mysterious factor we cannot control, which could lead to a global catastrophe. In this video, you'll find out which ice age was the most terrifying for humanity. Why can global warming freeze us? What's the mysterious substance from the depths of the ocean that could literally blow up the entire planet? And most importantly, could today's ice age become the last? In an effort to better understand the current climate changes on Earth, scientists are studying the most extreme changes of the past. And we certainly wouldn't want to experience this. Today, oxygen is essential for our lives, but three billion years ago, its emergence was catastrophic for the planet. That's when the first cyanobacteria appeared, which absorbed carbon dioxide and produced oxygen. Methane began gradually infiltrating an atmosphere that was saturated with methane at levels 10,000 times stronger than today. This is the same gas we currently use as fuel. But in the distant past, a high methane concentration in the atmosphere created a super powerful greenhouse effect. Gradually, methane, in reaction with oxygen, broke down into water and carbon dioxide. And as a result, the greenhouse effect weakened to the point that the entire Earth froze for 300 million years. If we suddenly found ourselves in the midst of that eternal winter, only a thousand out of a global population of nine billion would survive at best. And they would be left without food, as there were no animals or modern plants at that time, and there would be no fire to kindle. At the same time, oxygen on the planet would gradually disappear because all the cyanobacteria that produced it would freeze. So, there would be no chance of survival. The traces of this oxygen catastrophe were found not far from Lake Huron, which is why this ancient ice age was named after it. It lasted until the volcanoes saturated the atmosphere with greenhouse gases once again. But that was just a warm-up. Approximately 750 million years ago, our planet once again turned into a giant snowball and likely resembled Saturn's moon, Enceladus. This planetary deep freeze occurred with a brief pause for warming. Scientists believe that this time, the volcanoes had an even stronger impact on climate change, but in the opposite direction. Because the sulfur dioxide they emitted entered the atmosphere and, when combined with water vapor, formed hydrogen sulfide and sulfuric acid, which acted like tiny mirrors reflecting the sunlight. As a result, the planet cooled and became covered in ice. The larger the ice formations, the more effectively they reflected sunlight, causing it to get even colder. It was like a perpetual ice-making machine. But it was somewhat slowed down by the greenhouse gases, methane, and carbon dioxide emitted by volcanoes. Because the cyanobacteria that produced oxygen were frozen, greenhouse gases were rapidly accumulating, creating a new greenhouse effect leading to a sudden warming. The glaciers melted and more water vapor entered the atmosphere, which again reacted with volcanic hydrogen sulfide, causing the planet 
to freeze just as rapidly. This was a climatic shock therapy, and we had no say in it. The only thing deadlier than a shock freeze was a shock thaw. 251 million years ago, due to warming, 96% of life on Earth perished. This period is known as the Permian-Triassic Extinction Event. Within just 60,000 years, the planet turned into a massive furnace. It all started with the familiar greenhouse effect caused by the accumulation of methane and carbon dioxide. But volcanic emissions and decaying plants alone weren't enough for such an extreme warming. In reality, the largest methane deposits are frozen on the ocean floor, where they don't react with anything. But millions of years ago, due to ocean warming, some of this methane was released, intensifying the greenhouse effect. This caused the oceans to heat up even more, and even more methane was released. The scariest part is that for a mass extinction, just a 6 degrees Celsius rise in temperature was enough. Because this increase was accompanied by a decrease in oxygen levels and ocean oxygenation. The water literally became toxic. Over the past century, Earth's average temperature has risen by 1 degrees Celsius. That means we're just 5 degrees away from a global catastrophe. Unlike the deadly warming events of the past, the temperature is rising a hundred times faster in our time. Something's clearly amiss here. But today, volcanoes barely affect climate change, and methane deposits on the ocean floor haven't thawed. So it could be more about global factors. What if, all this time, it's been space driving the ice ages? The last one, which we're still in, started 2,600,000 years ago with periodic glaciations and interglacial periods. During this time, all early human subspecies died out, like the Neanderthals and Denisovans. Only we survived. And only 11,000 years ago, the climate stabilized, allowing ancient civilizations to emerge. These grand climate shifts were first linked to the amount of sunlight reaching Earth by Serbian geophysicist and astronomer Milutin Milankovic. According to his theory, the amount of sunlight reaching Earth depends on three main parameters. The first one is the changing shape of Earth's orbit. In reality, it's not a circle, but an ellipse. In January, we're closest to the Sun, so the planet receives 6.8% more sunlight than in July, when we're farthest from the Sun. But the orbit shape changes in cycles of 100,000 years. This means that at different times, more or less solar radiation reaches the Earth. And just because the orbit has become maximally close to a circle, humanity has enjoyed these 11,000 years of climate stability. Another significant factor in this was the change in the tilt of the Earth's axis. Right now, we're tilted at 23.4 degrees from a right angle. But for the last million years, this tilt has oscillated between 22.1 to 24.5 degrees. The greater the tilt angle, the more the northern hemisphere faces the sun, causing more ice to melt. When the tilt angle decreases, the summers get shorter, increasing the chances of an ice age. This cycle lasts for 40,000 years. Also, precession, the direction in which Earth's axis points, makes the seasons more contrasting. Today, the axis points towards the North Star, but in a few thousand years, it'll shift towards the Little Dipper constellation. This will lead to extremely hot summers and very icy winters. Geologists eventually confirmed that the Milankovitch cycles indeed determined the course of ice ages. But according to this natural schedule, the next climate change is supposed to happen in 50,000 years. And right now, the Milankovitch cycles are cooling our Earth. However, recently, it was revealed that an even more significant cosmic phenomenon can influence the climate. The orbit of our entire solar system around the center of our Milky Way galaxy. 
In our voyage through the Milky Way, we cross a dense galactic spiral arm with many stars approximately once every 135 million years. During these times, there are many more sources of cosmic radiation around us, significantly increasing ionization in the troposphere, the lowest part of the atmosphere. The ionized particles in the atmosphere form clouds, and the more clouds there are, the more sunlight they reflect. This in turn leads to cooler temperatures on Earth. Scientists have already confirmed that the cycles of our cosmic journey coincide with the ice ages in the past. But even today, we find ourselves in the dense Perseus arm, which means we're in a cold zone, and it'll take us tens of millions of years to reach the next crossing point. So, right now, this cosmic factor is just adding to the cooling of our unusually heated planet. Could we have disrupted all these cycles after all? However, what's happening with our climate today indicates an additional factor X that was hiding in plain sight right here on Earth. Traces of this mysterious Ice Age killer are present in all contemporary weather catastrophes. September of 2023 became the hottest on record. Compared to the records of the last century, the temperature has risen by 1.15 degrees Celsius. Scientists believe that each coming year will bring new temperature records. But the real danger lies in the consequences. The summer of 2022 became the hottest in Europe's history. Rainy England didn't see a drop of rain for months, and the temperature soared to 40 degrees Celsius. The main water artery of Western Europe, the Rhine River, dried up to the point that Germany and the Netherlands had to restrict ship traffic. Italy was unrecognizable from space. The governments of many European countries had to introduce water use restrictions for households and completely ban car washing and garden irrigation. It was no longer about comfort, but survival. At the same time that Europe turned into a desert, Pakistan was dealing with unprecedented floods. These floods were triggered by the rapid melting of glaciers that covered the country's mountain ranges. Over 1,700 people lost their lives due to the floods, and another 2 million were left homeless. This led to a significant humanitarian crisis in the country. That same year, Florida faced the deadliest and costliest hurricane in history. Hurricane Ian reached Category 4 on a five-point scale. Packed with an enormous amount of moisture, it caused massive flooding in addition to immediate destruction. The insurance losses from the hurricane amounted to $65 billion. Scientists believe this horrific hurricane was a result of the warming of Atlantic waters. Moreover, it wasn't the only one in 2022. At the same time, Canada was hit by a powerful hurricane, Fiona, that became the costliest in the country's history. The consequences were so significant that the Canadian Army's intervention was required to rescue the affected. But what truly terrified scientists was Cyclone Freddy, which appeared in February of 2023 near Australia. With a sustained wind speed of 250 kilometers per hour, it rampaged across the Indian Ocean for a record five weeks. Its power matched that of a Category 5 hurricane. What saved people from the catastrophic effects was that for most of its abnormally extended existence, Freddy remained over open water. Freddy only briefly brushed Madagascar, leaving behind 220 victims. Scientists warn that this superstorm is a harbinger of even more significant natural disasters triggered by ocean warming. But in reality, global warming threatens not only extreme heat, but extreme cold as well. Indeed, in 2019, Chicago experienced colder winters than some regions in Antarctica. Such extreme cold led to a state of emergency in several American cities and fueled doubts about the reality of global warming. However, it turned out to be one of its consequences. 
There are always two polar vortices with icy air over the North Pole. One is at an altitude of 12 kilometers, and the other is at an altitude of 50 kilometers. Typically, these icy monsters stay put in their territory. But today, the Arctic is warming four times faster than the rest of the world because the glaciers are melting and exposing the land, which attracts even more sunlight. This reduces the temperature between the polar and temperate latitudes, disrupting the stability of the vortices. Strong fluctuations could cause a part of the icy vortex to break off and move southward, bringing unexpected freezes along with it. That's what led to an extreme winter in the USA. But as humanity finally begins to resist artificial climate change, natural disasters are only getting stronger. And all because of the threat we neutralized back in the last century. Or at least, we thought so. And it's all linked to a familiar element, which not only contributes to the rapid warming of our planet, but is also capable of destroying all life on it. So, what is the real glacier killer? The concentration of major greenhouse gases, methane and carbon dioxide, sharply increased in the 1980s. However, by the 90s, humans had taken control of most industrial emissions. Yet in 2006, scientists detected a sharp rise in their atmosphere concentration, which continues to this day and is gaining momentum. Remember, methane has been linked to multiple mass extinctions in the past. So, the recent surge greatly alarmed the scientific community. Furthermore, methane creates a greenhouse effect 34 times stronger than carbon dioxide. But why is its atmospheric content suddenly rising again when we're supposed to be behaving ourselves? That's far from clear. Some scientists thought it was a natural, premature ending of the Ice Age. Or rather, it's the quickest ending phase of it, which lasts just a few decades. But we passed this phase 12,000 years ago when the climate stabilized and warmed up. Back then, with a similar increase in methane content in the atmosphere, Greenland's temperature rose by a whopping 10 degrees Celsius in just a few decades. It's hard for scientists to predict the outcome of the rapid methane growth today, as we're already in a warm interglacial period. At least, they've identified a new unexpected source of methane, massive wetlands in Africa. According to Ewan Nisbet, a professor of earth sciences at Royal Holloway University of London, these wetlands have significantly increased in size due to human-induced climate change. This leads to more decay and methane emissions. Methane emissions are also exacerbated by large livestock farms in tropical Africa and India, as well as massive landfills near megacities like Delhi. As the methane blanket in our atmosphere thickens, more methane is released, and it does so in increasingly dangerous ways. In recent years, Arctic residents have reported massive explosions straight from the ground. These explosion craters could swallow a 15-story building. During investigations, scientists found that Antarctic lands are slow-acting time bombs because permafrost is thawing, providing an outlet for massive methane deposits. In Alaska, researchers discovered a new lake the size of 20 football fields. It formed in just the last 50 years due to an enhanced greenhouse effect. It wouldn't be such a big deal, but it's bubbling with methane. As frozen methane quickly thaws and seeps into the water, it further intensifies the greenhouse effect. So, the methane engine is picking up speed. But the biggest scare is that so far, we've only been talking about 1% of all the methane on Earth. If that amount was enough to raise the average temperature by one degree in just a hundred years, what will happen when the remaining 99% of methane in the oceans is released? According to scientists' estimates, to release methane from the ocean floor, all it takes is warming the water by just one degree. The only saving grace is that the depth of the oceans reaches thousands of meters, and it takes thousands of years to warm them up by just one degree. However, 
There are exceptions, like the Arctic Ocean, where the frozen methane isn't buried as deep. It's only held in check by a layer of permafrost rapidly thawing today. Scientists warn that the release of 50 gigatons of methane could happen at any moment. Meanwhile, annual methane emissions from all sources total just 0.5 tenths of a gigaton. Such a methane catastrophe would rapidly amplify the greenhouse effect by 12 times. This will cause the oceans to heat up much faster, and then the Permian extinction scenario is likely to repeat. If thousands of gigatons of methane are released from the ocean floor, large methane clouds will blanket Earth's surface, and then the greenhouse effect will be the least of our worries. With a high concentration of methane combined with oxygen, it becomes explosively dangerous. According to the clathrate gun hypothesis, a simple lightning strike could trigger an explosion that could encircle the entire Earth. Many scientists are skeptical of such a scenario, but no one can guarantee that such a catastrophe is impossible. If the theory proves true, it's uncertain whether humans could survive. Even those who escape the explosion will likely die from oxygen deprivation and a lack of drinking water. The only survivor will be Earth itself. And like millions of years ago, it'll eventually restore conditions suitable for new life. All it takes is to wait a few hundred thousand years, a mere blink of an eye on a planetary scale. And though Earth has pulled off this trick for billions of years, scientists believe it won't last forever. Because according to a recent study published in the journal Nature Geoscience, the real apocalypse will occur in about 250 million years, when Earth's continents merge into a new supercontinent called Pangaea Ultima. It'll be riddled with thousands of volcanoes, rapidly saturating the atmosphere with greenhouse gases. Moreover, the aging sun will naturally become a few percent brighter and hotter than it is now. Due to the massive landmass, the oceans won't circulate freely in cool Earth uniformly. So the planet's average temperature will rise from 15 to 46 and a half degrees Celsius. This will lead to the extinction of all mammals, including humans, due to the inevitable denaturation of proteins in living cells. So our only long-term survival option is the colonization of other planets. Or perhaps, in millions of years, we'll discover some technology to save us from this climate apocalypse. What do you think?